Does anything look familiar here? <laughs> if you've been on my channel long enough, you're probably going to see it straight away, especially this season. Yes, after five years <laughs> and some bleach issues when I was pedantic about getting everything sterilized for the next orchid, etc. Well, my pots are breaking. So happy days ish, kind of like I'm going to be repotting this, but it's not going to be unless I see something that is a valuable teachable moment, it's just going to be a wonderful chillax little video, me repotting and talking about the ongoings of the last days since my explaining video. I'm glad you're here. I hope you stay and I hope you enjoy the video. Because of my rib injury, I'm a little bit behind on my Kiyoguchi Happy Field, which is here on the left. A week ago, I saw root nubbins growing, and it is at that stage I like to go in because I do less damage to the root tips. Highly recommend before you repot. If you can wait for roots, if the orchid isn't in dire straits of something else going wrong, wait for root nubbins, repot, you won't break root tips anyway. Kiyoguchi Happy Field has no root tips anymore, but they're growing, so I want to address her in this video. And then here's my magic wand, also in a broken pot. However, from what I can tell, because she's so close up against the edge, I don't know if she's got root tips or not, but I want to address her as well. There are still some nice weeks left for her to settle in. It shouldn't be too stressful for her because she's going in the same media, but she's getting a bigger pot. Let's get a move on and see what is going on in the pots. And I'm going to start with the one I'm a little bit antsy about. That is my pretty, pretty Kyoguchi Happy Field, who has bloomed for us many, many times. I also did a beautiful feature video on her because of her amazing, remarkable, outrageously gorgeous fragrance. If you like, I will link that video in the description. I should have actually picked off the Lekka before I started the video, but here we are. It escaped my mind, which is something that has been happening recently. My mind has not been focused. That is why I didn't want to get into this project with this orchid when I saw the root nubbins coming. I just can't. My brain is just not working. I'm totally out of sorts. I remember one thing and then it's immediately forgotten again. So, you know, walking distances have increased because I keep having to go back to where I had the thought to try and conjure the thought up again. I don't know if you do that. If you're going in one direction, you think of something and then you get distracted and, well, you forget whatever it was you were thinking of if you go back to the previous location in the hopes that the thought will come back to you. Well, I do that. Hasn't worked this time around. Not so well. But I'm feeling a bit better today. I still have the discomfort on my left side. The right side, of course, is acting up because I don't know which side to favor without the other one having an issue. But I'm feeling a bit better. That's why we're going to do this today. And I have not brought the carpets in because I needed two or three days where I could actually get some air. And you can see some dead roots over there. These Lekka beads here are attached to the tips, which is, ooh, hate it. We'll just get her out and tilt her away from the root tips as best as possible. Now this orchid also, for some reason, I have to do another video on that. Thank goodness we didn't break anything in here. That's awesome. Phew. This orchid has also struggled with some kind of a fungal, I believe it's a fungus affliction. It's not wet. I'm painting it with garlic alcohol to the best of my ability, just to make sure it doesn't keep spreading but it's bizarre. My little ones have had this this season for the first time. Meanwhile, yes, I've had a very high humidity summer, which was for me amazing, but possibly all these little afflictions have come because the setup is also extremely water retentive, adding to the humidity, put 80% of humidity into the air, and bingo, you have yourself the perfect storm for possible fungal infections. I'm happy to see all those beautiful roots there. I'm gonna do some trimming, some grooming while I'm at it. Might as well, whoopsie. We got a gorgeous root tip here, even though the root at the back looks dead. So we'll be mindful of that. So yeah, the carpets are still outside. The weather forecast is gorgeous for the next 10 days. And I'm just gonna take advantage of the fact that I don't have to do it today. I am in southern Spain after all, and I can always go mañana. I can actually take a proper breath. 
sleep still evades me because my right side is having issues with the fact I've been favoring it a lot more in the past weeks. <laughs> uh, yeah, walking, it's all very interesting, I have to tell you. I think I should get myself like a, some roller skates or something and a helmet and just have King pull me when I take him on walks because dude is just too fast for me. I have this very long leash, it's a training leash where I have him at the end and I can roll it out, roll it out. And well, <laughs> he needs the whole distance. I can't catch up and eventually I have to have him slow down so that I can catch up. I don't want him walking heel at this point in time because he needs his exercise and I'm not able to keep up pace with him at all. Yeah, and leaving him off the leash, he is not like my other dog that would not leave my side. King is like squirrel and he's off and goodness me. I know he will come when I call him. I know he would do that, but still I would have a panic. Speaking of panic, let me tell you the other day, <laughs> the paranoia is real my friend. The other day I was filling up an RO bucket because it was breezy, the atmosphere was dry, not much humidity to speak of. You know, the usual, the conditions that I'm used to. Well, knowing that all this was going on, of course, in my mind, I'm already having some kind of palpitations <laughs> every time I go to the kitchen and think, is that something else come loose that is leaking and now causing issues? Anyway, so I walk into the living room just to check that my bucket isn't overflowing and I hear this wet hissing sound and I can't walk fast to react. So my heart is going 100 miles an hour and instead of me thinking, thinking walk faster I'm thinking take advantage of the time as you get to the kitchen of your first step in order to stop the water from spreading and leaking too much all over again well here's the big part <laughs> this just goes to show where my mind is at I'm in freak out mode seems like unless I get some rest there was nothing untoward in the kitchen but I could hear water leaking everywhere I could hear you know that hissing splashing sound and it was only afterwards that I realized that it was my neighbor addressing the hedge by where the Chao Praia lives with her hose. You see, that's how bad it's been. My trust issues have gone down the drain because when I went to bed that day, that fateful day, the washing machine wasn't on, neither was the RO system. Everything was tucked up, buttoned up for the night and still that thing came loose. So I'm wondering if there was an excess of water pressure somewhere within the mains, something, I don't know, but it hasn't happened. But you can see on other days when my neighbor is just doing the hedge as she does, that's why the Chao Praia lives there because of the high humidity humidity that provides when my neighbor waters there, <laughs> my mind immediately jumped to, oh my goodness, there is another leak in the kitchen. And here's Mac Hobble trying to get there as fast as possible, already having contingency plans in my mind, ready to go when I get there. So it's been, yeah, let's just say my mind is just not with it. But it's so nice that you clicked on this video. Thank you so, so much. It's nice to talk to you again. I have been uploading shorts because I don't want to be radio silent all the time. Also to keep the momentum of the channel going. I know that it affects my watch time, not posting long form videos, but there's only so much that I can actually do even sitting down. So having said that, let's keep the momentum of the channel going. And would you please give this video a like? I would so appreciate that. And also if you have not subscribed to the channel, I don't normally just babble away about private things on my channel. <laughs> I try to keep everything orientated towards the orchids, but sometimes there is a need to explain a few things, talk about a few things, bring down any possible concern that other things may have raised in the meantime. You know, do the courteous, kind thing because of what you do for me here. And for that reason, what I consider a straightforward repot replacement to a new pot, I thought this would be a good time just to have a chill and a chat and see if I can actually talk coherently <laughs> while breathing without too much discomfort. Just see what I'm able to do. I'll probably be exhausted after this filming. I can already feel my breath getting a little bit heavier. Please do not misinterpret this at all as a video of woe is me, complain, and I am feeling so terrible. Nope, nope, nope. I am not complaining. I am explaining just to keep those that are interested in the loop, which I think is only fair in my opinion. 
If you disagree, let me know in the comments. And of course, I shall adjust my content accordingly, but sometimes I just feel there is a need to be open about things and just say, look, here's what's going on, especially if something is so out of sync of the norm when it comes to like uploading videos. So if you have not seen my shorts, you can also support the channel by clicking on the shorts and having a look, see how I've broken down several videos that we've already done in long form to make them into short form, hoping that the channel will also continue to grow in that way. Perfect. Let's get some water and let's fill up with lecker which I will speed up a little bit because I'm going to do this part in silence just to catch my breath. At the time of filming, I still do not have a washing machine, so I've got laundry soaking <laughs> and that will be my next task. However, I've also got a lot of media to clean, <laughs> but laundry comes first. There's a science with how to get through these kinds of days. Anyway, Kiyoguchi Happy Field is done. I'm going to use the water that she was soaking in because this is CalMag and seaweed at around 200 parts per million. So we're not going to let that go to waste. I'm just going to fill up the reservoir with what she is accustomed to. Nice new unbroken pot. Possible winter accidents have been avoided with this one. Now let's move on to Magic Wand <clears throat> eludes us with blooms, has been in my collection since 2018. I was hopeful that this would be the year, 2023. This is a beautiful growth with a sheath, her first sheath. Oh, well, no, sorry. Here's another one, but not as substantial as this one. Anyway, she's busy with her next growth. And as you can see, I've got the black spotting here as well. And <sighs> Contrary to what I would recommend and I normally do not do, I cut the other leaf off to see if there's going to be a continuance of the spotting down further on the leaf. So it was more of a test to see if it would progress. You can see where it stopped on the other leaf and that is where I cut this leaf. So there has not been any progression. Now, the question is, will the new growth get some or not? We shall have to wait and see, but I normally try not to cut my leaves because it's just opening the wounds and making something maybe an issue that wasn't an issue before so she needs a repot probably quite desperately but i have to be careful i'm going to focus my squeezing in the back because that is probably where there are no roots and for any eventualities i'm just going to tilt her to the back making it a little bit easier in case. I mean, she's got roots. The pot is tight. It feels really firm, but just in case. Oh, that looks, it looks promising. It looks very promising. She's gonna enjoy her bigger pot, that's for sure. So, <clears throat> well, we'll just keep squeezing. I hope I didn't bite off more than I can chew here by doing two but I figured that I've got time today. And I'm so glad if you're still here that you've got time too. And if you're skipping through the timestamps and missed the part where I asked you to like the video, I shall repeat myself, please like the video. It really, really is appreciated and a great help to the channel. Oh, look at this. Learn, teachable moment. Magic wand is growing a new root and the growth is, let's just say, not quite half of its potential. That is good to know. I shall keep that in my memory bank. Very happy. So I'm glad I did this after all. I was starting to regret it while I was potting up the other one. <laughs> I'm starting to think, what did you do? What did you do? But I'm glad we did this. This root has been bugging me for a long time because it's desiccated at the tip. Woohoo, we can get rid of that. And the majority of the roots in here are actually viable. They don't look it, but they are. It's the exception of a couple that can get taken off. No, I'm not rushing the process. I will do a full root ball cleanup because I have this happening right here. And this is how I like to see them, their least amount of damage when they're at that length. 
So it's not like, ooh, the roots are pretty good. I'm just going to up pot Habana. I've committed to this and I'm going to do it as best as possible. And if I need to take a break, well, you won't know because I'm going to edit all that out. <laughs> There's a cluster of dead roots in the back here, all from the seedling bulbs, which theoretically I could take off. But seeing as this orchid has not bloomed yet, I'm going to leave them on because they are storage structures. So if she had been blooming by now, I would have said, OK, we can take the seedling bulbs off. But nope, if she needs more energy than she's got now to bloom, then they're staying on until such a time that she blooms. That's how I work with my orchids, if I can help it. Now, if this thing falls off by itself because it's deteriorated over the years, then that's fine too, but if I can make the decision, make the choice, they're staying on. Just a little side note while I'm still faffing around here. <clears throat> I can see that I used large and small leka, not intentionally, but because that's how it came out of the bag at the time. But I also already potted up the Kiyoguchi Happy Field with small leka only, and that's what I'm going to be doing for the magic wand as well. Okie dokie, me thinks that's enough excavation for this one. I did take off quite a bit of moss from the base because winter is coming while it looks pretty. It'll always grow back, but for the health and sake of the rhizome, it's best to get rid of as much of it as possible. See, she started out as a climber, and then she's leveled herself out. That's great. That's good to know, because now I know how to pot her up without having to worry about the back bulbs. You can see how loose they are. It is super tempting. Nope, don't do it. Stick to the initial gut feeling. And stop it. There is a dead root right here. <laughs> She's fine. I don't have to continue. Stop. Stop. Keep the energy level as is right now. Keep the momentum going. So far, we haven't made any mistakes. And I'd like to keep it that way. She's going from a 15 centimeter pot into an 18 centimeter pot. I am very tempted to keep her as low in the pot as possible. We'll start out with that. But first of all, once again, we'll need some water and then activate our third hand. And how we're going to do that is by positioning the orchid where we want her. And then we're going to pour Lekka in the opposite direction so that she stays. Support and all like that because she has a clear direction of growth. If I were to take off the seedling bulbs in the back, I would probably trigger another eye at some point. So I would put her in the middle. But seeing as we're keeping her the way we are, we can respect the direction of growth. Where did my water go? Bigger pot, more water. <laughs> Third hand activated. Woohoo! You should see. Well, no, maybe you shouldn't. Let me explain. As I gingerly maneuver myself around the tripod, I am limping. It's just two steps, but I am limping. She was leaning a bit like the Tower of Pisa. I've just corrected her position just by straightening her out, which brings her away from the edge there. But because I have got viable roots at the bottom, and the support is still all attached, which is all fair and square and fine. She's now moving more into the center, but it kind of looked odd to have everything at an angle like that. <laughs> that would be me. I'm at the angle. If I can avoid it, my orchids should not be. Now you're thinking, whoa, she's burying those seedling bulbs. Yes, I am. I normally deal with a dry top layer, not so much in the winter, but it's fine. You see, there are no roots down here anymore. It's all cleaned off. And if I feel like it, if I'm concerned that something looks a little bit sus here, I can always take my secateurs and cut the seedling bulbs off and just pull them out of the pot without having to disturb the orchid. And if she is going to bloom for us next year, then that's great because then I don't mind repotting her again sooner than maybe two or three years. I would prefer to leave her as is for three years, depending on what she does. So if I can get her to bloom, at least in the next two years, she has enough space in the pot to do that. Thankfully, she doesn't have that much of a creeping rhizome. And her reservoir also will be filled up with the water that she was soaking in. Not too much so that not all the gunk comes out. <laughs> you don't want that in a nice spanking new pot. There's a lot of debris, but this has settled a little bit so we can use that Whoop, up to that point. 
and I'll just wait for the gunk to settle again and then oh, the reservoir is pretty well full. That's perfect. So much better. Goodbye, another eyesore out of the collection as in yucky pots. In retrospect, my magic wand is a little bit too high in the pot than I would like, but for the next two years, it's gonna be fine. Three years, like I said, I'm gonna have to weigh my odds here. If she blooms, it'll make my decision so much easier because then next year it won't be a problem just to take her out of the pot and settle her down a little bit further. You can still see a little bit of a lean too that I don't like too much. Okay, some of it could be light training, but not all of it. <laughs> There's a little bit of a wonky thing going on here, but if I try to correct her even more, she's just gonna lift up higher out of the pot and I really don't want that to happen. On a better day, health-wise, physical-wise, I would get into that pot and correct it sasahibi. That is Swahili for straight away. I wouldn't accept this, but the goal today was to successfully get these orchids out of broken pots and into good pots. I would say mission accomplished and whew, I'm out of breath. So I want to thank you so much for staying to the end. I appreciate the support helping me to stay focused. I appreciate that more than I can express. Thank you so much. Helps the channel as well that you're here and it gives me the opportunity to wish you a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please, I know, funny that it's coming from me, but that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.